All right, guys, welcome back. Episode 12. Sorry it's took a while, but there was no chance I was sitting in front of a camera recording in that heat. It's been far too hot this week. I just couldn't be bothered to play any computer games or anything. Ties you are, and you know, so on and so forth. I'll stop babbling. But let's get on with it. I'm going to try my hardest to bring more um, episodes out this week because I just want to get it going more i want i want to get further into it because nhl 18's out in uh start of september is it mid september so we haven't got long and if you've seen if you haven't seen the trailer to that game and you, you know you're new to the game you want to try and get into get into it or you you're an old player and you've had enough of it just watch the trailer and you'll be like wow because some of the stuff they bought out one handed deeks through the leg deep passes, through the leg deep shots that you can smash into the top corner. They bought a, uh, um, you know, I can do the clubs mode that I play with my brother. It's most of the time it's um, six players in it, so you got three forwards, two defenders, and a goalie. Now they've bought it at threes, so you've got two outfield, well, outfield skaters, whatever you want to call them, and a goalie. So it's going to give you more open ice, more goals, more chances to do skills. It just looks absolutely amazing. So if you haven't watched it, um, just go to NHL 17 EA, whatever, in YouTube. You'll find it. And uh, yeah, just give it a watch. And pretty sure, pretty confident that you'll be wanting to get it. I'm definitely going to be getting it. I'll bring in loads of content. From day one of the game dropping, I'll be bringing out clubs i'll be bringing our uh, road to glory nhl foot team and then i'll i'll bring out another career mode i'm just wondering what player to do at the moment obviously we're doing david clark in nhl 17 you guys drop drop a comment and let me know someone that you might an old player a new player that you might want to see a career mode done in the nhl 17 but anyway guys let's get on with this episode and first against Montreal Canadiens. They are on a massive tier. Let's just get into them, smash them up, take the win. Get on. So here we go. We're at the Canadiens, tighten up the defence. He says that every game. I don't know what's up with him. Not like we're getting smashed. That's bad checking there. Yeah, Jogger, let it go. Can they keep this streak in great play going? Oh, the one going, man. What is the matter with you? I've heard that in NHL 18 as well that the AI is meant to be a lot more, a lot better. Let's just put it that way. So they'll look for the breakout passes. They'll look, they'll look to just be better players. Hopefully, because these ain't up to much either. Let's be right. I'm having to force them to pass me the puck like now. He's not even passing me the puck. And then he just smashes it round the ice. Just open that they are better. Now let's get off. Keep it short and sweet against these because I'm telling you, I don't think we're going to get many chances. Minutes going, what? We've had six minutes off the ice. You meant to have like a 30, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Oh, oh Demos. Oh, well done, Yaga. Yaga, give it. Dave wants to skate around. Oh, bad pass, Dave. No, oh, Dave, you need to be stopping out of them Florida nightclubs, kid. Because that was terrible. That was terrible. No. Oh. Break up. Break up. Give it me then. Oh my god. Now I'm offside, you clown. Oh, that's a foul. I, I think all this. Um, I think Dave going on a mad tear has uh, gone to his head. And going out to these nightclubs, picking up the girls, staying out late, drinking all the gin and tonics. And uh, letting this one slip out his hands. Back to the point, that's it. Don't make some space. Yep. Oh, yes, get in. Want our goal, but we uh, we assisted it. We'll take it. 
decent play from day to make some. Oh, it's the old man telling us he's still there. We'll take it. We'll take it. Big D with a uh, assist. Yeah, decent. Yeah, and again. Oh, Dave. Whoa, Dave. Loose pull D. What? Yeah. Oh. Dave, unlucky kid. Take it. Really want to try um, uh, NBA 2K18 when it comes, but I'm, I've played it before and I'm just, I don't know, I just can't get it. I can get into it because I like it. Whoa, look at But I'm just no good at it. And that's what worries me. Oh, look at Dave. I suppose I could do like a career mode or something like that, but... Wow, Dave's second only to Patrick Clark, uh, Patrick Kane in the um, top goal scorers in the NHL. Woohoo! But yeah, getting back to NBA 2K18, I really want to play it. I'm just rubbish at it. But it's not like I could bring you any online gameplay because I'd just get smashed. I suppose I could bring you more my core and a, and a career mode. I just want to start bringing a lot more sports games to the to the channel. Obviously, I'm not even going to touch FIFA this year. Now it's dead. The game's dead. Everyone's smashed that game. And I've obviously restarted the channel a bit too late to be bringing that kind of content. So that's why I just thought I'd stick to NHL for now. And they are in. And gathered in by Pacioretty. The pass is off the mark. What a chance that would have been. Yes, Dave. Oh, that's magic. That's magic. Oh, oh, that was mint. That was a triple deep. Charlie Conway style from Mighty Ducks. Four and back and four and boom. This is not Heineken, by the way. It's a monster. Uh, no, not monster. Relentless. <laughs> Dave with the triple deep. Oh, maybe you shouldn't have gone for that hit. Oh, what? Has he scored that long ago, man? What? Don't give me bad line defense for that. No chance is that. But that's a bad keeping. He's let that go straight through his chest. Is a goal. Don't let it go to them, please. Come on, we've worked hard. There could be a couple of goals here. Oh ho ho ho! Get him, boys. Absolutely dominating. Yeah, Dave wants it back, I think. Ooh, hello. Fuck off. Back to the point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dave. You're not strong enough for that, Dave. Done that three times in the last couple of episodes. Gets in. What'll he do? Keep. I'm gonna say, get on it. What's your guys' uh, opinions on the um, Las Vegas Golden Knights? I watched the trade, and I watched the kit. I, w I watched the awards program basically, where everything was. Oh, everything was. Uh, Go on. Everything was announced and everything like that. I don't like the kit. I'm not going to lie, I don't like the kit. I don't like the kit. I just wanted it to be... I don't... Why is it grey? I know why it's grey, because the bloke that... Is it the general manager or whatever? He went to some kind of... Um, academy, like Air Force Academy. I don't know, some kind of like Army Academy or something. And their colours was gold and red or some crap like that. I don't know. That red should not be on the kit. Why on earth? Right. You were a brand new team to the NHL. Fucking hell. Oh, that was bad language. You're a brand new team to the NHL and you bring out a grey kit. A grey kit. I mean, that's just asking for trouble, isn't it? Why don't you just make it jet black with gold? That would look sick. 
And then, so they were at weak it. White with black. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Summer. Uh, jet black with gold. That would have looked mint. I'd have bought one. I'd have definitely got that kit. And uh, I can't believe. I, I, I know there's a lot of Panthers, but not Panthers, sorry, Penguins fans, because I've been reading it on Twitter, are absolutely fuming that they didn't protect uh, Mark Andre Fleury. What a save! I mean, how can you not protect a goalkeeper that's won you the Stanley Cup? Is it three times? And he was like, wanted their number one pick as well uh, in one of the drafts a couple of years ago. Just madness, man. And they're just going to see you. Bye. I'd love to know what the... Um, obviously... You, you, they couldn't pick all the top players because that, like, that's just stupid. But th there was, they could, they had a selection of what they, what they could have got. I'd like to have known the thoughts of the players that actually got picked. Because some of them might not even want it to go, but they had no choice. If you get picked, you're gone. I don't know if I'd have been happy about it or not. Some of them might be young and, you know, wanted to move on and look at it as a challenge and look at it like they were going to get, were actually going to get some ice time and stuff like that. There's people like James Neal. I can only think that, he, that he's fuming. He must be fuming. I mean, he's just gone to the playoffs finals with the um, Predators and now he's gone to a team that's probably going to be struggling for the first couple of years get around Dave yeah you through oh I'm lucky yep. oh I'm lucky and then obviously you've got Marc-Andre Fleury I don't know the guy, look, the guy looks happy enough but we all know what Smiles on people's faces can uh, can be false, can't they? You know. He's just probably doing as he's told. I'm sure they'll all get some decent bonuses when you're making that kind of money. I don't probably. It's just uplifting your family, though, isn't it? I mean, how far is Pittsburgh away from? From Las Vegas, I'm not really um, up on the American states or anything like that. I don't know how far. Oh, oh, oh Dave, big goal. I'm not even. I'm not sure how far the distance is, but you know, if you say if you was playing for Chelsea, and then you got drafted by, and we had a draft system, and new, and you know, a team was made up in near Newcastle, and they said right. You're going to get drafted and you got to move all the way up there. Now, that's not massively distance, is it? Because England's not that big. But it's, you, you, my missus won't be happy about it. She'll be fuming. Just under nine minutes remaining here in the third. What about when I'm on the ground to me mums and I cook tea? Their advantage is three. The but then I'd just say, well, just sure, um, Millions that I'll be getting, kind of soften the blow about having a cup of tea with you, man. Oh, Dave again. Ooh. Yeah, that's another thing that I think we've got wrong in this country. I suppose you can't really do it in football because there's so many leagues in involved, but we need to be implementing some kind of draft system like, some, like the Americans have got in the NBA, the NHL, the NFL. We need to be doing something like that to bring these young kids through because they're not getting a chance. You know what I mean, when you could David Clark, top point scorer in the NHL, go on, laddie. But these young English kids are not getting a chance. We need to bring back in the rules. And I'm all about football now. But you know, it transcends over sports, don't it? You know, you can bring, you can bring it into any sport. But it's just when you can buy players that are ready 
at young ages now. Like Man United, sorry, Man City just bought that Gabriel Z Jesus. What was it? 20 odd mil? I don't know what it was, but he's, a, he's an international ready player, right? You can whack him straight in the first team and he's scoring goals. We ain't got no English kids like that at the minute. But that's not our, f it's not their fault. It's just because our system's crap. It's letting them down. We need to, if, if, if these kids are that talented at a young age, we need to be taking them out of the ordinary school system, and putting them into a special sports school where they obviously still learn what they need to learn in the, for the GCSEs and the A-levels and blah de blah de blah and if they want to go on to college and stuff like that. But do it in an environment that just basically lets them learn sports as well. At, you know, at a faster rate. So, so say if my son's like really talented at football and at 10, 11 years old when they go to secondary school and he gets spotted by, I don't know, any football club, Man, Man United, right? They get spotted by Man United. They they should they, what should happen is they should spot him and say, right, we're interested in this kid. I want to drag him out of this school and send him to. I don't know. There is no school like that. But say if there's a sports school, we want to send him there, and basically he has to live there. Now it's harsh on a kid, but if that's what they want, let's just get back to this game for a second now pick up where we left off we smashed it boys Clark here, two goals one assist number one star again boys on fire you keep going to the nightclubs <laughs> next game Panthers against Toronto Maple Leafs they've lost 10 won 6 um, obviously we've won 10 lost 6 they've, these have got some good young players but they're still trying to gel together so we should be able to say that hopefully we'll beat them but Matthews Morgan Riley, uh, Willie Nylander. They've got some decent players, so they could cause an upset. Let's get on with it. So anyway, getting back to my point. So my kid gets sponsored, uh, sorry, spotted by Man United at 11 years old as he's going up to secondary school. And they say, right, we want to take this kid and we want him to come and play for us in the future. So they offer to send him to this sports school that's basically... A livable school so you go there you live there five days a week Monday to Friday and then you can go home at weekends and what happens is obviously basically they just have to work harder they have to go basically they could be getting up at like eight o'clock in the morning right going to school do four hours school work and then from 11 till 2 they'll be doing training in what in whatever sport that they do um, it, it, the, the school's just not might not be just for footballers it could be for any sport but obviously they'll go and do three hours training in whatever sport that they do and then they do another like three hours school work and obviously in between they have the dinner breaks and breaks and stuff like that but they could potentially be working till like 8 o'clock at night but that, but that is the only way we're going to get oh any kids, any decent kids in this in the, in the Premier League or to be going to play abroad or anything like that? Because the talent that we've got is not getting nurtured enough. Basically, they're just coming through the Saturday leagues or whatever they play, getting spotted with millions of other kids. They're getting signed by oh, Tim Pot Scarts. I'm like, oh yeah, you look half decent, come on, come and sign for Derby or whatever. And then you go with about 50 other kids and you get promised all this crap. And then when you're 15, 16 and you're not grown into your body properly or you, you're not doing as well as you could do. Bear in mind, because you're still at, living at home, you're still going to a normal school and you're not going training every day. So how are you going to develop properly? And then it comes to your 16th birthday and you think, oh yeah, I'm going to be a pro footballer. And all that you've been doing in secondary school is tossing it off because I don't need my GCSEs, I'm going to be a pro footballer. And then bang, 
you ain't going to be a pro footballer because you're not good enough. Because you haven't put the work in. You have not, not just you, you you've not been developed good enough. But I think that we need to, we need to bring some kind of system in. We need to bring some in. Wow, I did say that they could cause an upset. We need to get back into this game. Alright, come on. Dave, Dave's gone. Oh, see, why do we take so long to get out the ice? Dave's not even that fast. Yep. Oh, wow. I'm not happy with uh, Luongo as well, spilling it. Yep, Barker. Yep, yeah, good luck. Oh my god, we're getting nailed. Oh, good good punch here. Oh, knock it. Go on. Go on, it's still there. Florida's in possession as they travel in their own end. Skate kick out of the scrum. Barkov's got it in his own end, headed towards center. Gets in. What'll he do? A shot. Big goal. Big goal, Dave. He's nestling in them shots just late there. See, you know, going back to my last point, some of you guys might think, oh, it's a bit arse letting your 11 year old kid go and live at a school five days a week. But, you know, I, I wouldn't make my kid go. I'd have, you know, you'd have to sit him down, wouldn't you, and talk to him and say, look, this is your future. And I know the kids, and I know that they're not really going to understand it, but. You've got to do what's best for them at the end of the day, and you've got to try and convince them. You know, you're the appearance. You've got to, you've got to convince them, aren't you? That, that, that that's. You think that they're talented enough, and they're good enough to make it all the way. Last week, if my kid was that talented in any sport. I'd, I'd be having a serious sit down talk and saying, "Look, this, you know, in years to come, you could be you could be like Ronaldo, you could be like Sidney Crosby, you could be like Michael Jordan, and you know, you could have all this money, you could have all this and all that." And it sets them up well as well. For you think you send your kid, you send your kid to one of these schools, right, at 11 years old. You know, they're going to be tears and stuff, but they're coming back at the weekends. There's nothing to stop you. Or, or maybe, yeah, maybe they do a four-day week. You know, Monday to Thursday, and they get three days off. Just because their, work, their, their, their school days are longer than normal school kids. So if they work like 12-hour school days, Monday to Thursday. But, sorry, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. And then they have Friday, Saturday off, Sunday off. Ooh. Yes, get in. You know, give them an extra day off. But you're starting them early at, at, at being away from home. Because I know, I know, trust me, I know somebody that was uh, playing football for a professional team and. He got homesick. He didn't like it. And this was, at, at, you know, about 18, maybe. 18, 19 years old. And he packed it in. So it happens, you know. But if you you start them off at 11 years old, going to this school, they all, by the time that they're 16, 17, they wouldn't have been with the mates all the time. So they weren't wanting to be going out drinking and... You know, they're obviously going to be interested in females or whatever, you know, whatever they're into. Just under seven minutes have transpired here in the Not forced to be females, is it? But, yeah, they're not going to be, they're not going to be bothered about drinking on the streets with their mates. Oh, I want to go out, you know, I'm missing, I'm not going out with my mates, I want to go nightclubbing. Because they'll be used to a structure of the school. Whereas if you go into a normal school, what do you do when you when you you know 14, 15, 16? You want to be with your mates, hanging around on the streets, 
drinking, causing trouble, having a laugh, like all the young kids do. If you're that talented and you're going to this school, you're not going to have a chance to do that. So you're not even going to live through that. You're not going to know about that. But when it comes to being 16, when you've left school, or 17, 18 now, is it? You're going to be ready. You're going to be primed to carry on your football career. You're not going to be bothered about going out drinking with your mates on the streets or in the pubs. Because you're not going to have known anything like that. It's not going to bother you at all because you'll know that you're ready to be playing football for a professional team. You know, you're going to be scattered. You're going to be playing for a top team. Earning millions. But yeah, if you get it, but if it carries on going the way it is now, you leave school at 16, like I say, you might be signed to a club like, you know, a mediocre club. You're not forced to make it as a pro and then you've never lived away from home. You've never lived away from home. Ooh. You've got yourself a missus at 16 years old. She's like, well, if you go, I'm going to split up with you. So you get heartbroken and this, that and the other. You're just not ready for it. You're not ready for it. And that's what the problem is. Oh, big shot, Dave. Tough to tell if it hit the goaltender. The faceoff will decide whether it did or not. Clarkoff's lost another one. Puck corral by Pizzic. What a hit! Oh, he's been looking for that hit. Oh, Dave's dangling. Oh! Look at the reaction. See, I still believe that in this country. School and all that, it's just geared up for someone to get a normal job, a normal nine to five job. It, 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 we're not pressured enough to, oh, I'm lucky to be somebody, to, you know, these things just aren't there for, for us, for the English school kids. I mean, there might be if you go to a public school, uh, you know, sorry, not a public school, a uh, one of these posh schools where you pay to get into them or whatever. That might be different there, but I grew up on a council estate and I can tell you now that kind of stuff didn't happen where we lived. We was just pushed to make sure we attended school, try best of my exams and stuff. Come on, two two from two nil down. Both teams have found the back of the net, but it's even underway here in the third. Has it back deep. Get off it, Matthews. Come on, Yoga. Finish it, Kev. Woo hoo hoo! Get him. Little sip of the old run there. Come on. And this is Aaron yeah, let it go. What's new ski? Let me go, bless him. We're round. Oh, no, we're not. Yeah, oh. we'll take the penalty, though. One team is going to be short from this. Let's see what the call is. The Panthers get their first power play opportunity of this contest. Let's see if they can yeah. make good on it. He wants it. Oh, you, what are you doing? What are you doing to me? Oh, yeah, pass it, good lad. Wisniewski, bang, bang it, lad. Oh, where are we going? Yeah. Ooh, Dave, okay. And again. Ubi. He's skating in. Oh, is it the post? Ubi. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and again. Point. Oh, what a teamwork that was. What a goal. Davy boy. Woo. He's getting traded at this rate, I'm telling you now. He's getting traded. 
Someone's gonna want him. I'm telling you. Boy's on fire, man. <laughs> wow. Is timing, and theirs is the boys on fire. Eight minutes have gone by. Florida's Where's this kid come from? Goal is two. That's what all the, <laughs> these the Americans are saying. Yeah. Directing that one to Clark. Loose oh, okay. Tell you what. When I get <laughs> when he gets to his full potential, he is gonna be position. absolutely filthy. And the save there. Possession established. Okay. Good reach there. Looking to Clark. Wait a minute. He's been on fire tonight. Yeah, Two goals on, already. Dave. His teammates would love to see oh, him get okay. that HT, Doc. Have a break. Have a kick cap. Gathered up again by Yandel. Five minutes to go. Four to up. Shutting down. All right, coach. Chill. And a bit of fun here. That's that garrison, isn't it? He's been. He's just been uh, traded to the. Traded to the Vegas Knights. Big it. Bit that. You want some more? It's actually the um, NHL draft tonight, isn't it? Quite good that there's no... The last couple of years, you've had McDavid that's basically gone straight into the... Go on, Dave. Go on, Dave. Get in. Oh, Dave's unstoppable. That deke is just too filthy. Can't wait to get them... No, um, one hand the deeks next year. Probably we're going to be scoring some dirty goals. Well, yeah, last not last year, the year before you had um, Conor McDavid that went straight into the Oilers and now is the captain. Absolutely amazing player. And last year you had Austin Matthews and Patrick Liney. Matthews obviously went to the Leafs. Patrick Liney went to the Winnipeg Jets. Another awesome player. If you've not watched him play, oh, that kid is going to be an absolute monster in a couple of years. He's a monster now. He's about six foot something. Six foot five, something like that. And it's, it, go on YouTube, type in Patrick Lyonet and watch some of his goals. Woo. Mate, he can hit that puck. And obviously, he's still growing into his body. He's going to be an absolute monster in a couple of years' time. But this year, they've got... They haven't really got anybody, have this? They've got no one that's going to go straight into a team. Who's number one pick? Um, not Flyers, is it? Flyers is number two. Stars is number three. I ain't got a clue. I can't remember who number one pick is. Dave, three goals, two hits, three stars. Number one star, should I say. Boom. So, yeah. There's no, they've got no player that's going to be, can go straight into the NHL. They're all going to have to go into the AHL, is it, or the CHL, and get stronger, grow into the bodies and stuff. So, a bit disappointing, but what can you do? Anyway, guys, that's the end of the episode. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, me rambling on about, you know, my opinions on British sports and kids growing up in sports in the UK. Leave, leave your opinions in the comment. If you didn't like this kind of video, then I can, you know, revert back to the commentary of the game. But I just thought I'd do something new, see how it went. But as you can see, we're 11 and 6. Next game is the Senators. They're 10 and 5. One overtime win. But we're doing well. We'll, we'll get into the playoffs. I'm going to make sure Dave's on fire as well. If you did enjoy yourself, drop a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys.